So welcome everyone to the Streamzy community call for 6th April 2023. The first thing on the agenda are questions and issues if someone has something. Um, I have a question, but I'm not sure if this is the time or in any other business. It's about the CRDs. Uh, I wanted to ask if it was ever brought up that the CRDs for StreamZ um, are extracted out in a separate repository somehow, or... Um, it would make the life developing it a complete hell because you would need to do many releases, many PRs and so on. Yeah, that, that, that was my second point. Um, was it maybe discussed that or ever brought up that we create like a specs um, um, that basically say how CRDs should look like and maybe stuff like the compatible CRDs, if like, if there are, let's say, for example, that someone else want to implement a um, topic a CRD, Kafka topic CRD, or a Kafka connect CRD implementation, and we want to verify if it's StreamZ compatible or not, what we did before, for example, how Knative do it for is having some specs and conformance tests for something like that. I'm just wondering if this was brought up before. If not, I can start a separate discussion about it. Uh, I'm not sure I follow, like everyone can take the CRDs and use them. Yeah, so definitely everyone can can like take CRDs, and, uh, but like if there are written specs for the CRDs and the data plane behavior expectations. Um, that can help whoever wants to implement them um, understand how they can be StreamZ compatible. And then the next level would be having conformance tests that can be run against an implementation and talk about and um, issue a report about the conformance to these specs of that implementation. Sorry, Ahmed. When you when you say specs, what do you expect? So, um, I mean, uh, in the documentation, there is all the description of the the, the CRDs and all the the fields that you can create uh, in those in, in the yeah in the corresponding custom resources so the, there are subtleties that that uh, are not just subtleties there are like a description of the behavior um like uh implementation must behave or should behave or may behave or can't behave in this uh way or that way um uh, implementation must um honor this field or not um i can share some samples but it is basically more like the in the documentation it is stating what are all the fields and how the user can use them um the specs are talking about the different aspects uh, they are talking about um how an implementation um they're talking about what must the implementation behave like and the areas that are not really important so it's more of this kind of like a generic description of uh the how streamzy behaves like the code itself like otherwise without this someone needs to go into the code and double check what happens in each that, and then make sure where an implementation can make something break or not. Um, one example from, from, for example, from Knative uh, is there are 
um, data plane component that may reply once an event is published to or sent this data plane component may reply with another event and if you are doing an implementation that doesn't expect that um, it would break for example so it's not compatible to work so there is a piece of documentation that says data plane accepts these error uh, these um, for example uh, type of events and the responses are abc and that's how it will behave and it says for example there it may so you can do a similar implementation and you you may reply or not if you don't that's okay in other areas it says must so if and it, it says must because if you don't do that it, it will break um so yes. so it seems that uh, you are kind of describing a kind of protocol in this in this case right it's not related to crds or K, K native as something. So if you have something to, to, to share as an example related to the CRDs, it will be great. Yeah, yeah, we'll do. Because what you're talking about, it sounds more a kind of protocol. So when you describe yeah, this the is, protocol. This is, for example, from when it comes to the data plane. So there are like, you can describe control plane and the data plane, and you can describe uh, um, um, pieces of um, the CRDs that are, for example, uh, common between an implementation, for example, how we use um, label selectors in a lot of areas, uh, how you, for example, uh, convention, if you want to call it like that. So yeah, it's 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 both. I, I will do that. I, I don't want to take more time. I, I just wanted to know if this was brought up before or not. If not, I can definitely share a lot of that there and we can do this on a discussion maybe or something like that. Yep, thanks. Okay, anyone has anything else for the questions and issues? In that case, we have two proposals. Uh, one is about the uh, node pools. That's what I wrote, that's up for review. And I just wanted to mention it because I wasn't entirely sure, but your topic operator proposal is still in draft. Is that intentional? Yeah, it is. Um, I'm hoping to move it um, on today. I, there's just a few more things that I want to um, change before I undraft it, but I don't think there's going to be any substantial changes. So thanks for any, those people that have already taken a first look. Um, and yeah, hopefully today I'll undraft it and we can uh, circulate that a bit more widely okay anyone has anything to proposals if not we have four prs on the list unless someone adds something more so the first one is the quota plugin pr how do we stand there? I saw that Paulo and Tom made some comments there. That's another thing on my to-do list for today. Awesome. Thanks, Tom. Yeah, I also have to have another pass on the PR. Okay, another one is about the craft dashboards which you open, Paulo. Yeah, so I have got, uh, I guess, a couple of people approval, but uh, yeah, you 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 made some comment, Jakob. So um, I don't know if there is more uh, things to change or 
yeah, whatever. And uh, yeah, I was waiting also for uh, Mikel to take a look. So maybe if you have some time at some point, no rush, it's not a uh, high priority, so. Sorry, I'll try to take a look. Thanks. Okay, the next one was this thing about integrating the open tracing tracer when open telemetry is enabled. So the build is failing, but I guess we should first decide whether that's something what should go in or not, Paolo. Yeah, I was taking a look at uh, this uh, shim thing that uh, yeah there is in uh, in the open telemetry land in order to kind of bridging uh, open tracing but using the open telemetry API. I am not sure to be honest. I can have another look, even because the last comment from the user was that uh, Dibesium could release an update with the open telemetry uh, even before we are going to remove open tracing. Uh, so maybe it's not going to be so useful, I would say. I, well, I, I So I have not understood the, the impact for, so if we add this scheme, I didn't understand well uh, the impact uh, for connectors uh, which are using open telemetry instead of open tracing. So I have to double check the code of what this scheme does, to be honest. Well, there might be another connectors which use this, not just the Bezium, right? Yes, so, that's right, yeah. Uh, my understanding is that if you use open telemetry, it works as it did before. But if you use open tracing, then essentially the shim will convert the, the open tracing spans to basically open telemetry spans and send it to your open telemetry cluster. Yeah, that should be. Yeah, let, give me just uh, a few more time to take a look at the shim itself. And uh, if you try it, my Echo Sync plugin has open telemetry support, uh, open tracing support and doesn't have open telemetry support. Oh, yes, right. I used that in the past, yeah. So we can uh, use that one to for, for testing, kind of. Yeah, but anyway, good point. It's not just about Dibesium. Dibesium was just a specific case. Anyway, I guess okay. that uh, when we will, uh, we will get rid of uh, Jaeger, and we plan to do that uh, kind of before the summer, between June uh, or more or less, we have to remove the shim again, right? So it's something that we are adding now and removing in two months. Why would you, why would you need to remove it? Uh, because we are not going to support the open tracing anymore. Well, but this way you can basically support it if someone uses it in some connector on plugin or plugin while relying on open telemetry. Oh, so you're saying that uh, we can still have connectors using open tracing, even if it's not supported by us uh, in the yeah in our Kafka Connect, but thanks to the shim, it's going to work, right? Yeah, so the way I understand it is if you have, for example, a connector which supports open tracing, then that basically feeds the tracing data into the shim and the shim feeds it into yeah. the open telemetry and then open telemetry feeds it wherever you need. So actually you can still remove Jaeger. There's no, I don't think there's any Jaeger dependency. It's just the shim is open telemetry and then i think it's using still the open tracing apis but i don't think you necessarily have to remove it like the part which we will remove would be the configuration of the open tracing 
in our components, not necessarily in the connectors, but like the the logic for configuring the interceptors in Connect, for example, and the logic for configuring the Jaeger tracer, basically, and and registering the global tracer. But we don't necessarily have to remove the shim together with it. So it means that when we are going to remove open tracing, we will remove the underneath Jaeger implementation, but we have to keep the open tracing API because it will be need by the shim or it will be the shim just keeping the open tracing API. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. my understanding at least. Yeah, I will take a look anyway. Uh, I will have another pass and let's see. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, so this one from Federico seems to be working now. I think I edited here only because Tom, I know you will be on PTO and Federico requested your review. Yeah, I think this this is can be useful in some cases where users are hitting the invalid state for exception repeatedly. So yeah, yeah, okay. I will take a look at this one today. Thanks, Federico. Okay, anyone wants to discuss any other PRs or issues? Um, th there was one uh, issue about uh, uh, introducing unmanaged storage type for for StreamZ. Uh, we were uh, discussing this a bit in the issue itself. Uh, it's hmm, yeah, we get to that in the in the in the triage, so we can start okay. with that. That would be this one. Yep, yep, that's the one. So, want to introduce it somehow to everyone? Um, sure. Um, so. Uh, the problem that we encountered uh, while, while trying to use Trimzy is that it has a specified uh, volume claim template for stateful sets. And uh, well, there is very little flexibility to uh, like customize it or even not to, not to specify it. And uh, that is causing a, a bit of an issue for us when we are trying to integrate it with a, like a separate system, which would allow us to scale disks up and down. So I was wondering if it would be possible to have more configuration for this uh, volume claim template, part of the stateful set that TrimZ controls, including not specifying volume claim template at all in some cases, and then allowing something else to, to specify it, uh, like to provide PVCs, to populate uh, like, uh, and attach them to the pods. He commented a lot on the on the issue, so I don't know if anyone else has anything. Like I don't think this will really technically work because we still need to know how it looks like and how to mount it. Oh. Well, and I think from the, from from technical perspective, it could work. I mean, the the name could could be specified in volume mounts. Uh, the question, uh, and then then the, the same but, name. So yeah. yeah so so I, I what right. exactly it is what you cannot do today? Um, so we cannot delegate provisioning and attaching of persistent volume claims. To a separate system, not StreamZ. But you can so essentially today, if you pre-create the PVCs, then you pre-create the PVCs. Um, yeah, well, but but StreamZ would still take care of that. Let's say we want to uh, remove a PVC and replace it with a smaller one. That, but that's that... you can still do it that you delete the pod and delete the PVC and replace it, but Kubernetes doesn't support shrinking size. 
of PVCs. And it doesn't really support it because infrastructure doesn't support it. Like Amazon, if you use Amazon EBS, for example, it doesn't allow you to go in and shrink the volume size. The only way how you can basically do it is to create a snapshot and then out of the snapshot, create a new small volume. And then yes. you can create the PVC which mounts the volume. And then when the PVC has the right name, then streams it will basically just reuse it if it exists. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, but uh, how could we have two PVCs? I mean, uh, that, that's pretty much what we are doing. I'm, I'm just afraid that it will clash with, with StreamZ. Uh, because uh, StreamZ expects PVCs to be to have specific name, and there is no other way for it to understand that this that, PVC... But this there, way, right? you always need to follow the streams in names and streams it needs to know the names anyway because streams it needs to mount the pvcs into the pods so there's no yes. way going around it and following you can either follow the names or we can configure the names in the custom resource in some way but that would be super complicated because if you have cluster with 20 brokers then that would be 20 different PVC names you would need to specify. At any time you scale up or scale down, you will need to make sure that your PVC is added or removed and so on. So that, that's not really, not exactly scalable configuration. Okay, I think. Uh, thanks. So I, I, I'm sorry, may, maybe I don't fully really understand what exactly you want to do, but essentially, yeah. Oh, yeah, if sorry. you today create a PVC with the name, then I think in most cases, Streams simply takes the PVC over if it has the right name. Yes, uh, so that that I haven't tested, but it should work. Uh, the thing is that uh, we do have a system which as you as you mentioned, takes a snapshot of a PVC, moves it to a different one, like a smaller one, and then it should like change, like switch the PVCs so that the broker starts using, let's say, the smaller PVC. And that part, I don't think it would work because StreamZ expects that a specific name would be used for the PVC, and there's no other way for StreamZ to understand that. Well, you are new... not you are not resizing the PVC, so. You would need to do it differently. You would need to create a new PVE with a smaller size. Yes. And then you would need to basically delete the old PVC and create a PV new PVC with the same name, but bind it to the same, to the new PV, basically. That Yes, yes. That's, that's you, are, exactly. you are not going to change the PVCs. You are going to keep the PVC name essentially and just yep. change the PV to which it is bound. Yes, yes, you're right. I misspoke a bit. So that's exactly what we are doing, but without StreamZ and it, it works fine. I'm not sure if it's possible to do something like that with StreamZ. I, I think it might be. I guess. I don't know anyone doing it. I think there are many challenges, like the whole idea that you stop a single pot somehow and and uh, then you do some operation where you change its storage and so on. Like that isn't necessarily supported. Like the operator is running and the operator is expecting that the pot should be running and then the PVC should be there. So I think that will be one of the challenges where you need to do some operation which will fight with the operator ultimately because the operator wants to keep the cluster running under its own rules. And you essentially don't want that. You basically want to do some manual operations on the pods. So I think 
I, I think that will be an issue because you then suddenly start deleting some pods and some PVCs. The operator running in parallel will be recreating the pods and recreating the PVCs. And it's hard to think it. And essentially what you will need to do for such operation is you will need to stop the operator, stop it from operating it. Then you would need to do your operation. And then you would need to bring it up again to continue operating it. So like that's something what people normally do. I, I, this is, for example, something users would do when uh, migrating from Amazon GP2 to GP3 storage, which like you cannot just switch the storage like this. But yeah, this is one of the ways how you can basically do the migration. But that's more one off thing, not something where you would kind of do this every day because otherwise i guess i wonder what do you get out of the operator if the operator is more stopped so that you can do some your own operations than than running okay yeah makes sense uh thanks for the context uh the, the initial uh like goal of this issue was to just like disable uh management of storage by streamz like uh provisioning of pvcs but uh, because I thought that it may clash, uh, and but as you pointed out, that that part should be fine. There might be other issues, uh, like like uh, recreation of pods, but that is like uh, a different story. Uh, thanks for the for the so, answer. So I want to keep the issue open for the time being and see if that can somehow work for you, and then get back. We can back get back to it in two weeks or. I, I don't I, no I think it would be fine to just go close the issue. Uh, yeah, I just just wanted to get a bit of more understanding about this. Uh, so and I, I got it from Jacob and and you. So thank you. Yeah, just to add that there is the pause annotation, which I guess would be an alternative to actually stopping the operator if you've got um a cluster where you've got multiple. Kafka clusters running, then you know you only want to operate on one of those at a time. Then using the pause annotation on the Kafka CR it should be an alternative to stopping the operator, which would obviously sort of stop it for all Kafka clusters. Ah, this is great. We'll look into that. Thank you. Okay, thanks. And feel free to give it a try. And if you have something more, feel free to come back. Sure, thanks. Okay. Another issue to triage was this remove support for put disruption budget V1, beta 1. So that's part of what we discussed last time about removing support for Kubernetes 1.19 and 1.20. And dropping the budget, I think this would be a good start issue. So we can have someone who wants to something to start contribute it, but yeah, maybe we should keep it on the triage list until it's the time to do it so that we don't confuse people. Or should we mark it as a good start right away and just add their comment that it can be done only later? Yeah, why not do that? Then at least if people are looking now, they can sort of uh, be a market for later.
Okay. Then another one was about adding support for TLS connected to the Kafka exporter metrics. Anyone has any thoughts on it? Or only me? Matt, uh, is it referring to the board where the Kafka exporter exports the metrics for uh, Prometheus, right? Well, that's the only port it has, so. So I don't see it referring to anything else. To me, it seems completely out of concept to support somehow encryption just for the Kafka exporter and not support it for all the other metric sports. Yeah, let's. I would and say let's to, keep it open and wait for the for the user. Because you already uh, yeah. asked the comment, right? In order to get. Well, a week ago. Also, I think if you start getting into this business, then next you will add the encryption to. The other metrics port, I don't know if the Prometheus exporter supports it. But the next will be that you will have to do all kind of configurations to configure the host name or the sounds in the certificates and so on. The other thing is that even on the scraper side, you have to provide the certificate for scraping the port and connecting via TLS. Well, I don't, I think Prometheus supports it, but you would need to configure the. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. There and so on. To be honest, I'm not sure how many people are doing this way. So do we want to give more time for use case or do we want to reject it? Well, to be honest, we can reject it right now. Say, yeah, unless the, 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 the user will come with a real useful, super useful use case that we don't get right now. I see more problems than uh, advantages, to be honest. Like this, does that make sense? Yep. Okay. Uh, this is a bug in a topic operator. But I don't think there's any more lock than the vertex thread blocked exception. 
and no better lock was provided since last week. So what should we do about this one? Well, you you can leave more time to the user to come back to you, or you can just close and say, I don't know, reopen if you if you haven't resolved the the issue yet, or you have more log. I have not strong opinion on on both. Yeah, I guess we can close it and reopen it if, if the lock is attached or provided. Yep. Okay, and the last one is is about moving the configuration for the cruise control capacity and the configuration in general in a config map, because to me it seems like something what's quite big and shouldn't be really passed through the environment variables and especially for the capacity configuration it's basically open ended because it has entries for each broker in some situations so that's why I opened this issue Paolo you linked something else uh yeah so i i agree with issue uh with this issue so i agree that we should do that way uh I, I linked this issue where in the past, because of using, you know, the environment variable, uh, if the user want to know, okay, what's the cruise control configuration that was applied? So maybe the default one where there are the hard goals and, you know, uh, the soft goals and things like that, they have to, yeah, to log into the pod then check for the cruise control properties file. That was the only way. So we were already discussing about uh, reflecting this configuration in a config map, but uh, yeah, so it's kind of related, right? So it's better having what you are proposing, passing and having everything in the config map. Uh, so yeah. you are suggesting to keep this one and close this one? Yes, exactly, yeah. So keep the new one and close the old one? Yeah. uh do you think this would be a good start this seemed to me like it should yeah yeah it should not be so difficult to be honest Okay, and close this one.
Okay, so that's the triage. Anyone has any other business? Do we wanna get back to Ahmed's idea about the spec or? So um, I think um, having something written first and reference to the K native spec and stuff might make the conversation later more fruitful. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Jakob. In that case, I guess that's it for today. So thanks for joining and see you around on the different channels and in two weeks. Yep. See you, everyone. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Bye.